Okay, let's say we need to create a very large uh, image for a billboard or for the side of a building or for, you know, who knows what, just a very high resolution image. Right now I have a Nikon D5100, which is I think 16.2 megapixels. But let's say I need something like one of these 36 megapixel images that come off of a D800. Now I don't have a D800 because I don't have, you know, gee whiz, 3200 bucks or however much they cost to, to purchase one. But let's say I do want to create that sort of image. You know, the way to do this probably best is to use Photo Merge and Photoshop. And I'll show you what I'm doing here. Most of you might be familiar with this already. Two ways to do it. Either do it directly from Photoshop or you can use Bridge. I like to use Bridge. I'll show you how you do it with both, with both uh, ways. What I've got here are some photos of Grace Hospital that I took with a D5100 using a 40 millimeter prime lens. So it doesn't, it's not a, it's not a telephoto lens. Uh, I could have stepped back and with a telephoto lens and widened this angle or gotten a wide angle lens, but still I wouldn't have gotten those megapixels uh, that I want to get. So I've got a bunch of 16 megapixel images and I selected seven of them here in Bridge. These seven images I want to use to create a large panorama of the front of Grace Hospital with the medical arts building over on the right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to uh, Tools, I'm going to go to Adobe Photoshop, and I'm going to do a photo merge. And this very neatly brings up all seven of those images, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to select each of those images, and then I'm going to pick Vignette Removal down here at the bottom and Geometric Distortion Correction. You can just do auto. There are various different ways you can do this. I personally just really like to do it this way. Blend images together, vignette removal, geometric distortion correction. And these are like seven 16.2 uh, megapixel images. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to take a little while to do this. I'll tell you about how long it takes. Okay. So here's what I got. Now I stood in one place and I shot these seven images and that took about two minutes and 20 seconds to process. That's using a uh, quad core Xeon processor. You can see I got a bit of distortion going here that it's a kind of a rolling type thing. But this did a really good job still stitching that all together uh, from where I stood at one place. One thing I guess I always say is I, I like to let my images overlap about 40%. So uh, I, about 40% of one image goes on to the other, to the other, to the other, so that the uh, stitching inside of Photoshop can match up. So we're going to like edit this a little bit and take some of this distortion out. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flatten. I'm going to merge visible all these. So you can see over here we have the little tool uh, right above where it says opacity 100%. We can go here and we can say merge visible. We should be able to click there. And so there we have now merged all of that. And so now I can see naturally this end has to come down a little bit. And uh, I, can, I can just rotate that or I can actually distort it just a little bit. Okay, so maybe the best way I'm thinking to do this would be to go ahead and use the uh, transform down here and go to warp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, I've uh, gone in and I've done warp. I'm going to pull this uh, corner down a bit. And probably going to pull this corner out just slightly. I realize we're kind of uh, messing with our image a little bit here, but for what for my needs on this uh, particular image, that's going to be okay. It doesn't have to look absolutely perfect. It just needs to make it be a pretty good representation of what's out there. Okay, so I'm going to say that's pretty good. Then I'm going to crop this image as soon as that filter has been applied. So we're going to use our crop tool here. And what's important is that I get the sky, the top of the buildings. And I may not have done the best job in the world shooting that image, but there we have a very large uh, panorama of Grace Hospital. Let's brighten it just a little bit. Maybe upper contrast just slightly. Now, if you want to see actual pixels of this, what have I got? Well, I've got a fantastic, super large image of the hospital. Let's do that to control zero again to come back out of that. So you can see there's like a super amount of detail in here. If I take the hand tool and scan around, I've got a humongous image here that basically is exactly the same. Now, there's a little bit of lens distortion for sure. But that's going to be acceptable for a panorama to use maybe across the top of a magazine layout 
or even to put on a wall somewhere just to show what Grace Hospital looks like. My image size here is 16,439 by 3,037 pixels. So that is a huge image. I don't know what that equates out to in megapixels. I would think probably more than 30 megapixels there. So I'm going to say cancel and I'll do a file save as here. One thing I think that people don't realize they can do also with the photo merge is you can go vertically with it as, re as, soon, uh, as well as horizontally. Most people are used to going the horizontal like a panorama. But this thing works really well uh, going or vertically rather than horizontally. I'll take a picture of our medical office building here. Here's the top one, here's the middle one, and here's the bottom one. And I'm going to do the same thing with that. Photo merge tools, Photoshop, and photo merge. Once again, I'm going to uh, do vignette removal and geometric distortion correction and say OK. OK, and so what I have here, you can see once again, I would be doing better if I was shooting this off a tripod rather than shooting it by hand, but I did shoot this all by hand. I'm going to go back over here again, and I am going to merge visible. We're going to say yeah, merge visible. And I'm going to crop that again. I'm not going to have to worry too much about uh, distortion on that. That actually is a nice perspective sort of shot. I will crop out all the little edges that didn't work. Got plenty of sky if I need some blue sky on this. And there we go. Now that's an image shot with a prime lens, not a telephoto. And this is, an, once again, a very huge image. Image size. I've got an image now that's 4,451 wide and 5100 tall and uh, you know some people might ask why are you not using a telephoto lens uh, why are you using a prime lens uh, super sharp zero aberrations if you zoom in on this there's almost, there's almost zero fringing and everything with a uh, prime lens you don't have two lenses in there to distort the light so what I've got is a very nice uh, humongous picture once again that probably equates to at least a 22-24 megapixel image. Uh, once again, you people who know how to do the math on that can uh, figure that out and tell me what I've got. But I've, I've got a much larger image that is totally undetectable. The, um, the uh, mer photo merge in Photoshop now is so good. I don't know why you'd want to make that leap to go toward a, uh, you know, other than you just don't want to jump through this hoop. But I've certainly fooled people into thinking these were, you know, multi, multi megapixel images, images and they're all shot with a 16.2 megapixel rather than a 24 or 36. Another thing we could do uh, that I've not talked about yet is you can make several photo merges and then merge them together. So as you see, as we did this vertical one here, we could have, uh, for instance, a picture, a picture, a picture, a picture, and merge it and then do a picture, a picture, a picture, a picture. And I'll show you a, a good example. That might be a, an image that I could do for our lobby. So I'm going to pick some images here that might work for this. I'm going to get these tall ones that I've shot. And I'm going to photo merge these five, and I'm going to photo merge three more underneath them, and then three more underneath those to create a truly monster photo merge. Okay, so here's my first image that I got, and you can see there is some distortion and all there, but we're going to work on that. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to merge visible on that image, and I'm probably going to go ahead and crop what I can use out of this image. I'm going to crop about this much right here. And I'm going to save that image file, save as, and this will be lobby top. Now I'm going to sw switch to the next layer, which is the layer down below that. And here I have one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think I got six images on that one. Once again, tools, Photoshop, photo merge. We'll call this one File, Save As, and we'll save it as a JPEG also. And we'll call this one Lobby Middle. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to do the bottom down here. And so I think that probably starts right here. 
with this series of images. And this one I'll say File, Save As, and we'll save this one as Lobby, Bottom. So this time I'm just going to use Photoshop just so we see how it works without having to use Bridge. I'll say File, Automate, and Photo Merge. Same kind of thing, I just have to navigate to where those files are, so I'm going to browse. And here's my Lobby, Top, Middle, and Bottom. And if, if Photoshop should know how to go ahead and I don't, even, I don't even think I have to align these or anything. I'm just going to say vignette removal and do geometric distortion again. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the result of this is kind of weird. I should have, uh, you know, if I'd taken my time and shot better, I would have shot a wider shot up here, so I'd have had more to fill up up here. Did pretty good over on this side, but you can see I got a little little wild and a little wide over here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to merge this. We're going to say merge uh, visible again. And now I'm going to go ahead and crop and see what I can get out of this image. So here's what looks like what's going to be mostly usable. I'm not going to try to clone anything in and make it any bigger than it has to be here. But I'm going to do that. And all of a sudden, we've got a pretty nicely done, uh, massive image. This one is. Let's see how big this is. Image size. This is a 7919 by 7621. That's 26 inches by 25 inches at 300 pixels an inch. So what I've actually done is I've used uh, parts of what probably 20 or so um, 16 megapixel images. Now if I want to like make that look better image adjust, let's brighten that a bit. And we might want to do a little shadow highlights work here. Image adjust, shadow highlights. I like to very subtly use shadow highlights and never use quite as much as it comes up with by default because that can really start making things look artificial. And there we go, we got a pretty good image. Let's take a look at actual pixels on this baby. And let's uh, move around a bit in it. Wow. Humongous image. Jeez. Uh, Don't see anywhere where Photoshop failed me on merging this thing. The seams all it seems 100% seamless. And so amazing job Photoshop with your photo merge. And so there we have something like probably a 40 or 50 megapixel image. I don't know, maybe not that big. Uh, definitely up in the 30, mid 30 range. And once again, you people who are the mathematic people who can figure out megapixels, maybe you want to give me a, uh, a readout on that. But I actually took picture, 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 merge, 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 and then merge, merge, merge. And there you go. Uh, you end up with something that's humongous without having to pay the uh, price of something like a Nikon uh, D8, D800, although I'd love to afford one, 3000 bucks is a little expensive. But as you can see, if you know what you're doing with Photoshop, you can do some really amazing things and not have to invest in a, hu a, a huge type camera. I know we got a little bit of lens distortion. You're not going to get that shot with the D8000 or the D800 either though. Uh, even with a fisheye lens and all. So you can make some really amazing things happen in Photoshop using Photo Merge.